So I reached my goal of reading 55 books this year. I will admit a lot of these were shorter books because I took a children's lit class, so a lot of them were children's books, like middle grade, like chapter book type stuff. And a lot of them were comic books because I'm just obsessed with comic books. Um, so it's not as impressive as it sounds. But I just wanted to share with you the books I read this year that need to be on your reading list for next year, aka the favorite books I read this year, the best ones. Um, I don't need to tell you about all the crappy books I had to read for random classes or just books that I thought were going to be good because TikTok told me they were and then weren't actually good. So we're just going to go through the creme de la creme, the best books of the year. So I started off this year reading The Midnight Library and it was so amazing. It is such a good book. The Midnight Library by Mark Hag is this fantasy book where main character kills herself in the first couple pages and then has to live her life out, her afterlife out in the Midnight Library where basically you can pick any book off the shelf, read it, and then you get transported into what your life could have been if you changed a couple decisions. Um, so maybe you move to New York instead of following your boyfriend when he went to research whales that is a real plot point or maybe you liked your life in New York but you picked the wrong job um at the end she kind of it just kind of takes this woman through what life is all about and all the, the joys of life and why life is worth living um those first couple pages are really hard to read um so definitely check the trigger warnings and stuff on that but again highly highly recommend um, this is a totally different vibe, but The Wife Stalker is a thriller told through two different POVs of two women that are obsessed with the same man. Um, the one is like the ex-wife and the one is the new wife. And, um, it's very, um, dark and mysterious and fast paced. I listened to this on audiobook, which I would highly recommend. It has two different voices, one for each of the women, and it flips back and forth and it's only eight hours long. Um, even shorter if you read it at two times speed, which sometimes I do. Anyway, that was really, really good. Another really good audiobook that I read this year was The Slade House. Um, another kind of horror mystery, uh, this one only being six hours long. Um, and it basically talks about this house on Slade Street that every like 10 years someone would disappear mysteriously around that house and basically these people were getting like sacrificed so that the people who lived at Slade House could um, be immortal. Really cool, really dark and weird and I really liked it. Um, this year I finally caved and finished Six of Crows series by reading Crooked Kingdom. I had been putting this off because I was like, it's so sad. Everyone says it's so sad. I don't want to read it, but you definitely need to read it. Like the other one kind of ends on a cliffhanger, but I just wanted to like pretend everything was okay. Um, it is definitely sad, but it's also just like a wonderful conclusion to the first novel. Um, Another book that I absolutely loved is The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, another fantasy, like, adventure, fast-paced book. Um, basically, there is, this takes place in a parallel universe of sorts where there are different kids with, like, magical anomalies. So there's this one girl that's a gnome and another one that's a phoenix, one that is the um child of the devil like the son of the devil um the antichrist or whatever but so this one man who's in charge of overseeing the orphanages he's like in charge of reviewing the orphanages that take care of these children he is sent to like a very like problem child house and he's supposed to review whether they're getting taken care of there and he kind of just falls in love with these kids and like forms this connection with them and it's really cute and i would highly recommend Next, I read Family of Liars. I might be blinded by nostalgia, and that's why I love this book so much, but I loved this book. Um, e. Lockhart is one of my favorite authors. I read We Were Liars in eighth grade, and it has been my favorite book like ever since. Um, I just love the way that E. Lockhart writes. I think her writing is phenomenal, and Family of Liars was just like a cool um, 
prequel to We Were Liars um, and it had a lot of the same themes and it was really good. Ooh, Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson, another one of my favorite authors. I love Tiffany D. Jackson. Whew. Young adult thriller about this girl who's like, I want to be a singer. And then she kind of gets in this relationship with an older man um, who's like helping her become a star, but it's super toxic and everyone's telling her that and they're like, hey, you should not be with this man. He's grooming you. And she's like, no, he loves me and I'm going to be a star. And like you slowly throughout the book, she like realizes how wrong this relationship is. Um, but then she's trapped in it so fucking good again read the trigger warnings on this it is hard to read at some points but it is a wonderfully written beautiful story that i would highly recommend to anyone <laughs> i read a lot of spider-man comics i would recommend pretty much all of those i love spider-man comics they go so hard um another comic slash graphic novel i don't really know that i got into this year was paper girls this one's a classic a sci-fi um graphic novel where it is all about time travel but it takes place on um, four girls paper girls in the 80s um shit goes down they're the main protagonist it has a stranger things vibe there is a series of it on amazon prime if you are looking for the tv version instead of reading i don't know why you'd click on this video if you'd rather watch tv than read but you know we've all been there anyway the art style is amazing the story is super compelling and it's just like really, I just love 80s nostalgia and like kids being the ones who have to figure this shit out. I like, I hate to be the bitch that's like, I want to be a kid in the 80s, but I do think I would be so slay as a kid in the 80s. Like I watch like Stranger Things and It and like Paper Girls and I'm like, ooh, why do I have 80s nostalgia for a time I was never even alive during? <laughs> Another book I would highly recommend is a middle grade book that I read for my children's lit class and that is When You Reach Me by Rebecca Stead. This has one of Newberry's so like it's no surprise that this is fucking phenomenal but it takes place in the late 70s and it is another time travel book but it's not about the main character time traveling it's about this man from the future leaving notes because he has to save her friend's life. Super good, um, highly recommend. I had to read it twice um, as a kid to like fully get into it, I will say, but maybe I was just a bad reader. That is also totally an option. Um, honestly, I'm gonna end it there. I read a bunch of other books this year, but those were, like I said, creme de la creme, the top of the crop, my favorite picks that I think you should definitely check out in 2023 if you haven't read them already. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.